feels incredible. It feels like validates the work you do. It, it means that when you do the next film, you work that much harder because you know people are out there expecting it and waiting for it. And you know it's special for them. So it gives you more pride in your work. Let's talk about roles. There's this great line in um, Fast and Furious 6, the character um, Owen Shaw says, this code you live by makes you predictable. In our line of work, predictable means vulnerable. This code you live by makes you predictable. In our line of work, predictable means vulnerable. I can reach out and break you whenever I want. Could that be said about Hollywood as well? If you're predictable, you're vulnerable? I suppose. I mean, I, I, there would be an argument that you could make that comparison. Um, I never thought of it in, in relation to Hollywood. I, I only thought about it in relation to the character archetypes in Fast, and mm. we had been, you know, we we were so um, vocal about the themes in Fast Five that the natural next step would be to create a villain that could uh, expose the downside of what we had been promoting in Fast Five. And so the concept behind the Sh Owen Shaw character was to do that very thing. Perhaps those are the things that put you in a different... Um, sphere than other actors because you actually think that way. Oh, absolutely. Well, absolutely. I'm, I'm curious to know about the character of Richard Riddick. Sure. Pretty dark character. Very. Pretty. Very different. Very different. Where the hell can I get eyes like that? Gotta kill a few people. Okay, I can do it. Then you're gonna get sent to a slam where they tell you you'll never see daylight again. You dig up a doctor, and you pay him 20 menthol cools to do a surgical shine job on your eyeballs. What kind of a place did you have to put yourself into? What did you tap into in order to play him? <laughs> I went up to the woods uh, for about four months and just isolated myself to play that character. No. To the point where bears were coming. To the point where bears were visiting me. It's crazy as that sounds. And it's a hard process to describe, but it's going into a dark place, mm. a hopeless place. And now as a family man, mm. I, uh, I'm a little uncomfortable watching Riddick because he's so dark, I get embarrassed that I could even go to that place. And when I'm watching Riddick on screen, I almost feel sorry for whoever's playing that character that they can have that anger and fury in them and that cold, you know, coldness about them. Mm. It's interesting. Who are you at home? Are you Vin Diesel at home or are you Mark Vincent at home? I'm daddy. To your mom? What about to your mom? To my mom, I'm probably Mi Michael Corleone. <laughs> <laughs> the true hustler. Yeah. How has being a dad changed you? Oh, my God. Being a dad allows you to be the goofy person that you are. Being a dad allows you to be the loving person that you are. You can... You, you have... Uh, open invitation to be as loving as you want. That's the perk of being a parent. What's up next for you? Tell me about the projects. I hear that so there's... So many. Well, one in particular, Kojak, and I have to say is one of my dad's favorite characters. Oh, cool. Yeah, I would watch it when I was a kid, the series. My grandmother loved Kojak. And uh, when I was real young, mm. We would watch Kojak when we were at my grandmother's house in Queens. At the core, Kojak is a, a New Yorker, and all that comes, all the perspective 
that comes from being a true concrete raised New Yorker. Mm. And we got Universal, I take my hat off to them. They got uh, Purvis and Wade who wrote Skyfall to write the origin story of Kojak. And the fun spin of it is a New Yorker that's gone through, a New Yorker that's survived the Twin Towers. Hmm. In, and, and the way that they're writing it plays to my history. So I watch the towers go up and I watch the towers come down. And as a New Yorker on that island, that's a big deal when the biggest thing on your island uh, is both built and destroyed in your upbringing and in your life. If you could talk to your younger self, knowing what you know, in those days when you thought, maybe it's not gonna happen, what would you tell yourself? Play it cool. <laughs> I'd say, um, I'd say play it cool and uh, learn as much as you can because everything you learn, you're gonna need. You won't have enough time to learn. Everything is an education. And Diesel, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.